turn it over to you. Awesome. Well, uh, great. So I think we will jump right in because we've got a lot of stuff that uh, we want to cover. And um, I want to make sure we have some time at the end for some questions. So go ahead and get this started. Can uh, everybody see my screen okay? Fantastic. All righty. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so today uh, we want to talk a little bit about Acqui CMS, what it is, uh, why it's here, um, and probably most importantly throughout all of this, uh, what this means for you and how that can be useful. So let's dive right in. So uh, what I want to do is kind of break this up into a few sections. So first, kind of like an overview, like um, why did we create this? What's it for? What problems are we trying to solve? Um, and then I want to dig a little bit more into uh, what's, what actually is in, in Acquia CMS. What is there? How is it composed? Uh, what are the things that you're going to get? And then finally, um, everybody's favorite part, I'll actually jump in and uh, do a bit of a demo Kind of show you uh, what we got going on with the very latest release that was tagged i think yesterday uh, and there's some actually some pretty cool stuff uh, so we'll dive in all righty so one of the things as, as a lot of you may know um we uh aquia came out with lightning uh, lightning was a pretty big part of drupal 8 there's a really great blog post about uh, lightning's end of life which is ending life uh, later this year with drupal 8 and so we started thinking about what does it look like for drupal 9 and we've been having lots of discussions with analysts and customers and partners and community members. And when we pull back and take a look at it, um, there's kind of three kind of big buckets that, that people are thinking about when they think about a CMS. There's the traditional web CMS, which we think of like as, you know, a, a Joomla or a WordPress or even, you know, a basic Drupal, um, which is really great, um, except it typically is not really um, very useful for a, a business user, a non-technical user, usually has a lot of costs. Uh, we're seeing less and less usage. Now, what we are seeing the rise in, um, especially uh, moving forward, is uh, the consumer CMS. So that would be something like a Wix or a Squarespace. Super, super fast, really focused on that site builder, very easy to use, but often not really secure, um, has limited feature sets and your ability to actually customize and kind of get what you want out of it is, is limited as well. So the ability to scale can be challenging. Um, we've also been hearing a lot about headless CMSs in the past, um, you know, five, six years. From a developer tech perspective, really great, right? Because I've got a ton of control and I can do whatever I want and I can put things where I want. Problem is, again, we start to see that um, for a non-developer, we start to have problems and issues. So when we're trying to think of what does the ideal solution look like, we really need to make sure that we kind of can get as many that, you know, that overlapping diagram, we can get as many of those things as possible. So it needs to be super flexible. Security is always gonna to be top of mind and every day it becomes more and more important. It's gotta be easy to use, especially for not even just a traditional Drupal site builder, although that's important as any of you that saw the Dries note uh, this year, uh, know that we as a community are focusing more on that, but really for the non-developer, for the business user, for the marketing user, for someone who doesn't live in the CMS all day long. Uh, the ability to have that, the same type of connectivity that you're going to get from a, a decoupled CMS. And then, you know, especially like Sarah's talking about, how do you take that then, make it secure, put in the guidelines and the guardrails and boundaries, and then scale it out, right? Not even just uh, scaling up to hundreds of thousands or millions and millions of hits, but scale it out to hundreds and hundreds of sites and manage that in the same way. And you can see, we've kind of got this life cycle that we kind of think through a build, run, enhance, extend, you know, migrate, and, and we keep doing that little circle. Well, the, the good news is Drupal actually does a lot of this really, really well. And uh, as you all know, and so Drupal is uh, very innovative. It's got a huge community. There's a ton of power behind it, and it's got this great commercial organization, you see the name of it on my shirt, uh, that's backing it and invests more in uh, Drupal than anybody else. We've got some great experts that are, their entire job is to work on Drupal core and to make things better. Super, super flexible. Um, we have kind of defined this idea that we're starting to hear more about this hybrid CMS. Um, I don't know how much of that came from uh, Acquia and Drupal, but 
it certainly didn't help that we've been saying that um, for a number of years now. And that's a great strength that Drupal provides us. And then of course, scalability. So we've seen this thing scale up for massive, massive applications and be super secure across the board. Um, and so we know that Drupal's a really good, a really great um, solution to this problem. However, this was something I had to learn when I started, uh, I used to work in pre-sales at Acquia as a sales engineer and coming from the community, um, I, it took me a while to realize that going out and speaking to people and trying to talk about Drupal, the fact that it's so big and there's so much you can do and there's so many modules and there's so many choices and options just scares the pants off a lot of people. Um, and a lot of folks don't want that, um, that freedom. They, they want to be told what is the best way to do and then I can innovate out from there. So Acquia CMS was actually created to answer that question. You know, we've seen a lot of success with what Lightning has done. And actually, um, there is, you know, Lightning was really intended to kind of help fill a gap when D8 first came out. And a lot of what Lightning has has now ended up in core. That's great. Um, that's exactly what we were hoping for. But throughout that entire time, the entire life cycle of Drupal 8, we just kept hearing from partners and from customers over and over and over again. They're like, okay, this Lightning thing is great, but can you give me more? Like, you know how to build this stuff. Can you get me started higher up the mountain? So um, really that's the, the core value that Acquia CMS is trying to provide. It's an accelerator so that you're actually starting further ahead than you would be if you just took Drupal core. We're also really focusing on taking advantage of some of the things we have, particularly with Site Studio, which is a low code tool that we have. We're gonna take a look at it um, during the demo and really kind of empower the business users. And as a developer, I love um, these low code tools because they actually give me more time. Because now with self-service tools, I'm not stuck in the weeds doing a bunch of little things that quite honestly are not really the best use of my time. Developers, we wanna focus on integrations, on better testing, on CI CD. We wanna focus on new features and we wanna focus on all of those other cool things that we wanna to do to actually innovate and create stuff. You know, that's the highest value of developers. I'm really looking at being more efficient. So we've got this package set of capabilities, both um, contrib modules we're gonna speak about as well as the opinions and configuration and things like that. Instead of doing that over and over every time you have to do a site, let's put that stuff together. Let's let Acquia focus on some of those things like the baseline for security, additional testing, um, you know, vetted modules and things like that. Take advantage of what Drupal's providing um, from a core perspective and a community perspective. And let's kind of package that stuff so that we can move more quickly. And then we've got a bunch of pre-built connectors for our systems and um, our products in the way that we use because um, you may not want to use them today and you may not ever use them, but it's ready to go in case you do. And that's really, really important for us so that we can make it faster and easier for uh, our customers. Uh, and finally, um, we wanna do all of this great stuff, but we don't want to limit anyone in their, their Drupal experience. We don't want to close any doors. We don't wanna paint anyone into any corners. We wanna make sure that we still have as much flexibility as possible. And I have to tell you, that is, a, that is a massive challenge because the more opinions you provide, the more value you provide out of the box, the more decisions you've already made. And so finding the balance between making decisions and leaving people free to make their own choices is a, is a delicate balance. So as we've kind of talked about here briefly, um, the, the kind of the, the three primary benefits um, that you're gonna get from Acqui CMS is when you're gonna get those opinions. And these are best practices that come from our product team, our professional services team, experts in the community, our partners, um, all the best things. And we're gonna see what those look like. Uh, the low code site building tools, um, I'm hopeful that at some point in the future, uh, Drupal core will be able to catch up to Site Studio. But in the meantime, Site Studio is a really awesome tool that um, we can offer and, and we're gonna see how it works. And then finally, just the faster time to value. Uh, the longer it takes to get there, the higher the cost, the less time you have to innovate. And to be quite honest, um, from a community perspective, the um, the harder it is sometimes to sell internally 
using Drupal for a solution. So if we can get you there faster, then it's going to make it a lot more attractive than somebody going off and going rogue and doing like a Wix or a Squarespace or um, WordPress or something like that. Um, when we talk about the low code site building, we're going to talk a little bit about the content model we have, but also the fact that you have the ability to really do everything at the theme level from within the UI itself. So that's CSS, that's your templates, that's building out the components that are going to be used. And the really great thing about all of that is that you can do this in a, the traditional kind of site builder way. You can do this without having to deploy code. And that's something that's going to allow you to take the design and theme side of the site build, which is always going to be you know, 30, 40, 50% of the effort and decouple it from the, the code side. So we can kind of move in parallel tracks and you're no longer going to have to be stuck with trying to make a decision about, well, yes, we can, we've made that change and that was a really simple thing that we did, but you're still going to have to wait two weeks to see it because we got a deployment cycle and I'm not going to break our deployment process just because you want the block on the left side versus the right side. Right. Uh, and then this, this approach of building using these atomic components, which really takes kind of the, you'll, you'll see it's a very interesting combination of what we see with um, layout builder, and paragraphs and kind of sticking both of those models together, uh, which actually provides a ton of value for us. So again, we're gonna move faster. It's gonna be easier. We're gonna provide um, uh, more useful tools and opinions out of the box. And then all of our stuff is ready to go so that if you ever decide to add any, any of our other products and features, you can flip a switch and you'll get that configuration done for you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about specifically what's there. So as I said, the, the whole idea behind Opera CMS is to take the best of both worlds. We wanna have everything that you're gonna get from Drupal core. We don't wanna have any limitations, all of the community modules, all the great stuff that's coming out and really build on top of that solid foundation. And then we have a series of things that we layer on top, which we're kind of calling here, these core components. Now I'm gonna focus on the core components because you all know about Drupal, you know about core, you know about contrib and if you do have any questions about that, I am happy to geek out about it for hours and hours on end. Um, but for now, we're gonna focus on this because that's really where the unknown is. As I mentioned, we do have Acquia product integrations. Um, and then we've got some things that are set up that may not be out of the box, but are kind of prepped and ready to go. An example would be BLT. So for those who don't know, uh, BLT is a, um, it's a, a development framework, uh, build, launch, uh, and test that helps you kind of manage the deployment lifecycle of uh, doing a Drupal site. There was a lot of discussion about whether or not that should be included by default because it does provide a ton of power, but at the same time, it makes certain choices and decisions for you. And so the decision was, instead of putting it in there, let's, let's make sure it's set up and ready to go so that if you choose to use it, you can put it in and turn it on. Let's not block anybody. Another good example is um, Acquia Search. So um, the way that Acquia uh, CMS works is it actually has full support and configuration for faceted search using search API out of the box, um, set up for the database based search. So anybody can use it without having to use any external products, which is great. But then if you do, if you are on our platform in um, Acquia Search comes with the platform and you decide to use it, you basically flip a switch, put in a few things, and now you still have all of that stuff set up as well. So again, trying to give people choices about what to use there. I won't dig too much into our products because honestly, that's not really the most interesting part of all of this um, at this point. Uh, we can definitely talk about Acquia products in depth uh, at any point in time in the future. One of the things that's actually really interesting, I think, is the content model, which is deceptively simple. So about two years ago, we had a workshop. We got, um, I got together with some people from product, from professional services. We got some engineers. We got some people from pre-sales. And we went, uh, we all went to headquarters in Boston. That was back when you actually could do things in person safely. Um, and we spent about a week in a room talking through what does building a site look like? What is that 80% use case? And we, what we came up with was this particular model. There's actually one more content type that is not here um, that's actually gonna be added in a, a separate module in the future and that would be a product. 
But we really found that this particular model helps because you can actually do almost everything you need out of the box, except for specific things like in your use cases, you might have classes or syllabus or things like that. But from a, a general 80% use case, one thing that you're not gonna see in this slide right here, but for each one of those content types, there's an associated taxonomy, which allows you to have subtypes. So for example, you have an article that's great, but then you can choose a subtype of press release or blog or knowledge base article or whatever you might want to be thought leadership, you know, so that's where you can kind of we're trying to get people to start thinking about reducing the number of content types and trying to make the content types that we have more flexible and more useful. And that's just going to give us better governance. Uh, and this model actually works really, really well. Um, as we talked about, we do have as part of Site Studio the um, the ability to control the whole theme layer from within the tool, and so for all of those content types, for um, a bunch of the views and things like that, we actually have templates that are kind of preset and set up to provide a common experience, so that you have a starting place. You're going to go in and you're probably going to make changes to everything, right? Uh, but now you at least have a starting place for these things, so. You, you can have something out of the box that looks pretty good and works really well also. Same thing for the site building components. So that would be the uh, these components as we'll see in the demo are the pieces that you can use to assemble pages and to put things together. And those are also configurable. They're kind of like blocks, um, but there's a little bit different because of the way that they're created and the way they're managed. You actually get some more flexibility, um, which is actually a super powerful idea. And this is kind of the, the way that we think about putting things together. But the highest level for the website, you have these global settings, you know, color, you can manage your responsive grid, you know, typography, et cetera. Then we have specific styles that you can do for every individual element, for your headings, for your pagers, um, for paragraphs, navigation items, et cetera. Then we have these components, and those components, as we're gonna see, are configurable things that you can snap together and configure to get the experience that you want. Those components are then used to create the templates for the pages, for the content types, et cetera. And then finally, you have the ability to put everything together to create kind of unstructured content. And the thing that's really, there's a couple of things that are really powerful about this model. The first one is you're gonna have a lot more governance and you're gonna have a lot more um, constancy. Right. So instead of somebody going in and just one person creates things one way and one person creates things another way and you end up with kind of a disjointed site using the same tools in the same way. So what you end up with is going to, you know, everyone can have kind of their own unique expression, but there's going to be some type of unifying theme. Things are going to look the same. The, the paddings are going to be the same. The colors are going to be the same, et cetera. The other cool thing about this is that because we start at these global levels and then get more and more specific as we go through, it means that in this future state, you come in and you say, hey, the, the uh, Acquia UI um, site kit has you know, the Acquia's uh, colors of blue, which are really cool, but we wanna have green. You go in and you make that change in one place and then every place that that's used, because um, it's just um, styles, is gonna be updated and changed for you. So you really get that kind of top level control of how all of that works together. Um, the um, starter kit that we have is actually available for people to look at and you can actually get a Figma file as well for your designers. Um, if they wanna get in and start playing with it and seeing how they can extend these things. And let me get through a couple of these other ones real quick because I wanna jump into the demo and show you some good stuff. Um, one of the things that's actually really powerful about this is the, um, the security and the performance. And there's been, uh, the team that's been working on this has been focused from day one on things like um, accessibility, on things like um, the best practices for security. So there's like password policy and honeypot and all those other fun things. And then the, um, the performance. So making sure that things are performance, that we've got the, the right settings in place so that you get something really, really powerful out of the box. Um, when you start looking at things like you can see here, uh, perfect app deck scores in New Relic, 
we don't see any real slow transactions in XHProf. Um, um, you don't have any slow queries and this is without memcache, right? So just going through and really kind of crafting um, and, and tweaking that starting place so that you're starting at a really high point. You can run a, um, a lighthouse test uh, on this coming out of the box and you're gonna get a really high score without doing anything. And then from there, of course, it's a lot easier to kind of keep that, that performance hit because you're not gonna be um, having this whole thing to do. You're just focused on the things that you change and you add. It's uh, really powerful to get that. And then here's a look at just some of the modules um, that are included. And these are modules that are, you know, some of these are ones that you all probably know, like admin toolbar, path auto, meta tag. Everybody uses those, so they should be included by default, you know, and they are. And they are already pre-configured and pre-set up and installed for you, so um, you can get right to work. And then there's a lot of other things that are included in here that um, different people may know about or, or may uh, or may not use, like uh, moderation dashboard, moderation sidebar, um, workbench email, the diff module, uh, focal points. I don't know if uh, how many folks know that one. That's actually one of my favorites because it is uh, super powerful. You have your image styles, which you know we have a lot of different image styles in here that will change the images. And you, you know that situation where somebody's head gets cut off. Um, focal point actually lets you go into that piece of media and you can set the center point that they're gonna be resizing to. So no one's face is gonna get cut off again, unless you want it to, in which case you can use it for that purpose as well. So lots of lots of really good stuff, all kind of prepackaged. But at this point, looks like we are about halfway through. So I think the best thing to do is to um, jump right in and I actually need to go and log back in because we actually have that set up. So that's, oh goodness, that would be the security aspect, which is fantastico. Okay. And I'm jumping over to my other browser real quick because I've got this set up on a site factory instance. And so I'm gonna use the SSO there. Log in, here we go, okay, fantastic. Okay, so uh, now we're logged in. Now this is Acquia CMS, as I said, this is from the 1.2 uh, tag release, which was, I believe, yesterday. If anybody wants to check any of this stuff out, um, we've got it out on Drupal.org and it's on GitHub as well. So you can go and, and see what's there. One thing I will note is that as of right now, um, because the primary focus is on our customers and this thing just came out like right before DrupalCon, right now there is um, there is a dependency on Site Studio, So you're, you're not gonna be able to turn on the content types without the, the Site Studio API keys, which is annoying. Uh, well, actually you can turn it on, but then you can just turn those back off again. The configs there, you can take a look at it. Um, that stuff's actually being repackaged as we speak. And I believe another month or two, uh, those are actually gonna be rolled out as um, separate sub-modules. So actually you'll be able to pull them into, potentially into existing um, projects without having to take the whole ball of wax. So just, uh, just an FYI on that when you go to play with it. Um, but uh, so this is just a quick little page that I put together and um, Let's take a look at this and kind of see how this works. So we'll go in and uh, this is the Site Studio page builder. And it's great because you can use it from the edit screen, but you can also use it from the front end, kind of like layout builder. And so once we're in here, you can actually kind of see how this stuff works. You can see that we've, we've actually got all of these little pieces that are put together. There we go, my preheading, and I can, take these things, that's my entire row, but I'll just take this particular card and I'll move it over here. And actually, I think it's just going to resize all and remove those around for me. Okay, there we go. And you can see we have a drop zone so that we can put more things in here if we choose. Um, and then we've got uh, tabs here. But the way that this works is we can actually go in and as I mentioned, this is kind of a combination between layout builder and paragraphs. So we can do things like I could go in and add, um, I can choose the, the number of columns I want, or I can just go and add a preset layout. So we'll do a four column layout here. 
it's building up and my zoom is slowing me down. And then we can go in and take any of the preset components and we can take them from the standpoint of um, existing content. So let's, uh, let's drop in some content here. Lovely. And then we can also put in specific blocks. And let's go ahead and edit this component. And we will see um, how this works and where some of these options come in. Now, the thing to keep in mind with all of this is that this is all configurable also through the UI. So these options that I have are um, things that I can also go in and change. So I, you know, I can change the color, the border, the height. I can also change the options that are here and how they're applied. And we'll take a look at that in one minute. Cool, so now I've, I've got my content that's pulled in. And actually what I wanna do is, let's just go ahead and duplicate this and Zoom makes my internet so slow. Okay. And we want to put this in place. Come on, there we go. And then we'll see how we can actually change um, this piece of content here. And we'll change the actual view mode that's being used. And just to be clear, I've not made any modifications to any of this at this point. This is all just what comes out of the box today. And we will see that this will start to change over time. So let's go ahead and change the background color on that one, as well as the content um, view mode that's being used. There we go. And let's just put in one other thing. We'll just do some basic things. So we'll put a heading in here. We'll drop in some text. There we go. And um, maybe a button. That would be like a link. There we go. So we can quickly assemble this stuff and put things together to do all the things we want to do. Now, all of this is um, really easy to use. It's got a, a great interface. This is really designed for the non-technical user. We'll take a look at the, the back end of this in a second. But this can, of course, you know, take some time. So there's another concept that we have in Site Studio, which is in Acquia um, CMS, that is super, super powerful. And it's this concept of a helper. Uh, there's been so much talk about whether or not that's a good name, a helper or a blueprint or template, but then template means other things. But really what this is, is this the ability to kind of preset things. So for example, I could have an entire card section um, that is added here. And this would be more kind of like a, a paragraphs approach. We're thinking about a row by row. So this was all preset for me. And so I could go in and I can create these for individual sections, as well as even for entire pages. And so when we do our demos, for example, internally at Acquia, we set this up with these helpers so that they can quickly drop an entire page on a place that's been preset with um, all of the placeholders. And then they just go in and change the things they want. And then of course, at that point, you can move things around and change things and, and do all the stuff you wanna do. And I don't know if you noticed, but we also have the ability to go in here and say this section right here, I could actually now save this as a helper, assuming I have permissions, of course. So I can actually go to existing content. I can find things that I like that would be useful to reuse. And instead of creating a whole complex component or doing something crazy, I can just quickly save this as a template and now that, or a helper rather, and then that becomes something that we can reuse over and over again. So let me go ahead and save this so we don't lose our, our wonderful work here. Let's exit the page builder. Um, let's see, we've got about five minutes before I wanna open it up for questions. So I wanna hit a couple of things really, really quick. So as I mentioned, we do have the full, um, we have all of these content types that are available. So if we take a look at these real quick, let's, because we're already looking at Dries, let's take a look at the person content type. That'll be kind of like an example that we have. And you can see these are all um, standard fields that you might wanna use. Um, the place 
is actually um, an entity reference. You can see that we have that, as I was telling you, a, a, a taxonomy for a subtype, so a person type, you see how that plays in. Uh, and all of this stuff is just prepared for you out of the box. The other thing that's really cool is that Aqua CMS will create a, um, it's got a views for all of your content types as well. So we can see here that uh, we actually have, these are done here and actually, I think this content needs to be updated because, yeah, so this is a, a sample site that I'm working on here. So this needs to be changed. He's an executive and we'll go ahead and save that. And so what you'll see here, again, built into the templates is that now it's telling me uh, that he's the executive and that just links directly to the taxonomy, which is actually just uh, the faceted search filter applied to that same view. Again, all that stuff is set up. There's nothing here that you couldn't do on your own. It's just, it would take you time to do it. And this does it for you following best practices, which is lovely. Okay, so we've talked, got a few more minutes here. We've talked a little bit about how these templates work, but I wanna show you how this works because uh, it's such a powerful feature in Site Studio, especially for um, uh, Drupal site builders. So we have here all of the different content types that we have in place, as well as our master templates. You also notice that we can do um, taxonomy. We can do um, also, I don't know if you saw here, but views as well as menu templates. And the views templates have you know repeaters and things in them, so you can build this stuff out. But if we take a look at that um, that card view mode that we saw for Dries. We can actually see how it's built here. Now, this is the exact same tool um, under the hood that we're using when we were building that page. And in fact, if I edit the home page, you'll see something very much like this. And all this is doing is this is going in and allowing us to add different elements to this. And this just adding HTML. And so, in fact, if you look at this, you can see that this container, by default, these containers are going to be divs. But you can also see that I've got, I'm adding a specific class here um, that I wanted to add. And I can apply specific styles here. They're going to be universal for this particular template. And if I want to go in and add more, I've got everything I could possibly want here. You can literally do um, even down to just straight up custom CSS. Like there's there really are not very many limits on this. And it's it's pretty impressive the, the options that you have um, for doing this stuff. Uh, you can also see that I can apply some of those preset styles that I've created. So for example, this tag style, <coughs> excuse me, we're actually gonna see where that applies. If I open up the center media text, think it is on the media. Let me see, might be this one. Ah, yes, this is it. So you can see this is actually just nested um, because this is the HTML that's being generated under the hood. Uh, so here's a span that wraps around the job title. This is a heading, which is around um, a link, which is actually to the, the name. You can see here this list item type is going to actually be, I should open up one more. So this is my UL, this is my LI, and this is my anchor. I think that's all the way down. And you'll see that on the anchor, which was that executive tag, right? For um, the person type, you can see that it's, it's got this link style that's set. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. And very cool, we're actually just using tokens to set what these things are gonna be. So nothing that you don't know in Drupal, nothing you wouldn't do um, by hand. It's just the system provides an interface for doing all of this. Uh, last thing I'll show very, very quickly, actually last two things I'll show so that we'll have a chance for a few minutes for questions. One, I always show this because it just kind of shows the extent of how far this goes. Um, you typically wouldn't 
make too many changes to this very often, but there's been so much thought given to how this works that even down to um, the, uh, the responsive grid, and it's even got a little measuring thing. So you can see where things are and how many, um, how many columns that you've got. You can basically create your own grid here and you can change it over time. And you can go in and you can set different sets of styles based on each of these responsive breakpoints if you need to get that um, specific. So if you wanted that tag to be, um, uh, if you wanted that tag to be green when you're on a, a mobile device, you can actually do that um, all through the system. So last thing we'll look at here, and I could go on for another couple hours getting into all the details, is uh, we'll take a look here at these styles. We'll take a look at this, the tag, and you can see this is the actual class that's going to be generated. And when we edit this, um, again, it's just a really, really great tool for a site builder. I mean, developer too. I'm a developer, but it's so much easier for me to do a theme this way and so much faster. I can not only um, change the items that are taking place here, but I can also get the, that preview to see what they're going to look like. So you can see this is what that tag is going to look like. I can change the background color of the tag itself. Let's do something horrible. Um, I guess it's not too horrible. And then you can see, as we're seeing here, I can actually drill down into the hover state and make those changes as well. Um, and I can add all kinds of other substates down and get really, really granular specific on exactly what I want to do. And again, if I were to save this right now, now every single time we're using that tag class throughout the whole site, it's going to be pink with a blue hover. Uh, so I will, I will stop there. I want to jump back over because uh, I know we had one other thing on here we wanted to highlight and then uh, hopefully leave at least a few minutes for questions. There we go. Yeah, so I can jump in here. Thanks, Ron. Um, hello, everyone. As Sarah mentioned, my name is Michael Bain. I'm the uh, account manager from Acquia working directly with, uh, with Stanford. Um, so I work closely with the web services team to you know, ensure they're getting the most value out of their subscription, as well as onboard uh, new customers that need new sites from Stanford. So um, wanted to make sure before we get into Q&A, you know how to access the tool. Um, you know, as Ron mentioned, it's it's in the community, so you can use Acquia CMS today. Um, if you want to use it with Site Studio, um, it is free with your Acquia Cloud subscription, as long as you have a subscription. Um, so if you have any questions about the tooling itself or Acquia in general, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to me at michael.bain at acquia.com. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and then additionally for the Stanford folks, um, the web services team has put together a really helpful guide um, to explain how to you know, get your own custom site with Acquia, uh, as well as you know, add any tooling that you might, ha might not have today to your subscription. Um, so that's at the go to stanford.edu backslash uh, Acquia hosting. So, Super helpful guide um, if you want to save that um, for future use or again, reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to help. And I'll, I'll go ahead and drop my email and the link in the chat um, just so you have it. And then, you know, we can go ahead and get back to Q&A. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that demo. I think it was uh, super cool to watch and you have uh, a lot of patience dealing with Zoom while doing a live demo. I think it takes bravery to do a live demo with Zoom. I was doing one with a client earlier today and I was like, ha I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and here I am on Zoom. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for, for walking us through that. And I wanna kick us off um, with the time that we have remaining with the question of, um, how your product team works because our, our team has built a fairly similar product for, for Stanford and um, it's a, you know, has fewer power tools built in and uh, so far, at least in terms of being able to really get into the styles and really kind of make it your own. Uh, how does your product team decide what's coming out next? What, what is the next new feature? Um, that's a really good question. So um, basically, we just get the people with the strongest opinions and we throw them in a room with some weapons and we see who survives. Uh, no. Um, Solid choice. Yeah. Well, so there, there are a bunch of different um, teams internally that contribute. So there's uh, primarily an Acquia CMS team itself, run by Michael Sharon. 
he's the uh, uh, project manager. He actually came from professional services at Acquia, so he's got a long, long history of, of building out sites. And actually, there were quite a few people that um, contributed to the initial build, including um, Adam Honick. He was the guy that um, did Lightning in D8. Um, uh, Mike Madison, who heads up professional services. And then we've got a whole team of, of developers there. Um, we also are working very closely with the Acquia pre-sales team, particularly the demo team, which is where I actually came from, because the, the demo team is typically kind of the tip of the spear in, in terms of what customers are asking for, what things they want to see. So a lot of kind of innovation and prototyping and stuff takes place there. And so that's a really great place to go and look and see, okay, what's working, what's great, what should we standardize and bring in? And then outside of that, um, I'm sure very much like you have, uh, we've got an internal ticketing system. So um, our, our account managers, our technical account managers, professional services people, anyone from across the company can go in and, and make a request. This is so brand new. We're not seeing a whole lot of community involvement yet. I'm working on kind of helping to, to speed that up. But ultimately, that is what we're wanting to see is to get actual feedback from the community, from people that are out there using it hey, this is super cool, but uh, this doesn't work in this case, or it would be great if you could do this, or have you considered adding this module because it's going to help with this other thing? That's the kind of stuff that we're really trying to um, open the doors to. Yeah, that makes sense. And it sounds very, very familiar. We, we do a similar kind of process um, minus the weaponry. Any, any questions from anyone else? On a couple page? questions in the chat, Sarah. Um, Janice has indicated that if this is going to be part of Stanford sites, that it'd be nice if there's hands-on training schedule. Um, so maybe you can speak to that, what our plans are for Stanford sites, our, our D9 platform. And then Sean asked a question about, uh, similarly, if this is something that we're exploring offering as a campus-wide service, or if this is just for individual departments to work directly with Opia. Yeah, those are those are great questions. Um, so I'll start with Janice's. So the sites.stanford.edu is our managed content management system that is built and maintained by SWS. Um, so there is not a, uh, a plan to incorporate this into that platform because what we have on that platform already does sort of meet the marketing need or the, the uh, content creation and page layout need that our Stanford Sites owners has. Um, so in other words, it's kind, of, it's kind of redundant. It wouldn't necessarily be something that we would put on that system. but. That system also doesn't do all the things that Stanford's um, website community might want. And one of the things that we've designed the Stanford Sites platform to do is to be a really managed, really governed environment. So we're, we're pretty tightly controlling the Stanford brand. And that's because most of our website owners are content creators. They don't have the um, desire or the, the technical skills to do front end development, to, to know what responsive breakpoints are and, care about it and that sort of thing. Um, so they, they just want to put their content on a page, hit publish and go. And that's what that service is meant to do. But we have lots of other organizations at the university who are interested in creative control and who um, have an opinion about what modules need to be added and need that kind of um, access and control over their own web environment. So that's why we've worked with Acquia to create custom hosting arrangements where um, organizations can get their own dedicated environment and put whatever they want in it. And so this product is where that comes in. It's optional. So since it's brand new, I invited Acquia to come do a demo and talk about it. I think it's something where if, uh, if any organization at Stanford wants to get a custom hosting space and try this out and kick the tires on it, there's, there's absolutely a place for that. Um, and we want to encourage that. So to Sean's question, are we exploring offering this as a campus-wide service um, or individual departments would just work directly. I would say we'd start with individual departments working with Acquia because that's where we'll figure out if it has, um, if it's got some legs for Stanford, if it just has something where people are like, yeah, we really see a lot of potential and feel empowered by the tools that we have here, then we would love to uh, then explore further. Are there places where this meets a, a need that, um, you know, we haven't seen yet at, at Stanford. So that's how everything starts. We, somebody tries it first, they're the brave one. And then the next group tries it. And then we see where it fits and, and take Stanford. And our, our team is always, always looking for where we evolved the Stanford web experience and where we can make our 
um, digital ecosystem better, more flexible, representative of um, what Stanford offers to the world. So um, yeah, we're always looking for how we can help. Any other questions? I should mention for distributed units at Stanford, of course, uh, those of us in, in SWS and within University IT, we strongly um, encourage people to use our central hosting platform, Stanford Sites, which is managed as a software as a service. However, we do recognize that that's not a fit for everyone. And so the link that Michael uh, posted in here um, about the Drupal hosting on Acquia, that's also a service that we at UIT offer. And we help to, we're, we are advocates for units and distributed um, departments at Stanford to procure hosting, custom hosting on Acquia, where you have more flexibility and with great flexibility and great power comes great responsibility. So it's um, a less managed environment. However, we are here, we are your partners to work with Acquia. Acquia has given us, um, we've negotiated a master contract with Acquia where there are discounted rates. There's a master service agreement with the with the university. And so you uh, as, as engaging in that service, you're part of that. And so that's something that we offer as a service to the to the entire university on behalf of UIT. Didn't set it down. Sean, do you want to come off mute and ask your question, or do you want me to ask it for you? Sean's shy. Sean, I doubt that Sean's shy. Yeah. I'm shy. Really? I'm really shy. <laughs> Okay. I just, I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, the, just like for the Stanford sites and what we're doing at Davis, there's just a lot of parallels. I, I feel it, it's, I feel very happy that I look at this and say, hey, that's a lot of the same stuff that we're doing. We must be doing something right. <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering yeah. kind of as a, on the business side, like how are you managing this? Is this something that's going to be more like Drupal Gardens of the past where you guys are going to manage it entirely? And if you want sites, you just have the sites um and or is this like more of a code base that you install like lightning is and then customers can modify it kind of however they want um and if it's more like well let's answer that one first and then i have i have follow-ups sure so um right now it's it's just an accelerator so you can go and use it to get started on um, your own distro or your own code base um i know what i would like to see and I am making a lot of noise internally to see if we can't get on that happy path to doing an actual kind of Drupal as a service offering. Um, we, I don't know if, if any of you know, we do have our new um, cloud. It's a Kubernetes based uh, containerized fleet, auto scaling, all the stuff kind of cloud that um, is just rolling out now. And so I'm trying to get that on the list. So hopefully, We'll see some of that. But as of right now, it's just an accelerator. It's a way to get you started. And then you run with it and do what you like. So it sounds like it's pretty much just like the same model that you had for Lightning. Um, but you're calling it something else and saying this is the new thing. Yes, yeah, so it's it's a little more, It's it's got a lot more opinions in it than Lightning did. I noticed that, yeah. Um, which I think is a good thing. I think mm -hmm. it's a good thing. But Lightning was really aimed at trying to accelerate Drupal core. Um, which it did do, which was great. And this is more about trying to take it to the next level and saying, okay, let's provide something that's going to be more standardized that people can build on top of. Yeah, cool. Well, nice work. I'm going to uh, dissect it very carefully because there's a lot of cool stuff in there. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to drop another link in here. One of, I think one of the best kept secrets um, there's another project called a demo framework. That's what Acquia's demo team uses. That's like what you guys build, Sarah, it's like what y'all build. Um, they're currently, the team is currently in the process of looking maybe by next quarter, um, refactoring and rebuilding on top of Acquia CMS. So latest and greatest kind of um, uh, features and approaches and things that we take in our demos are always gonna be in there. So a great, great place to kind of look for new ideas and things, modules that are used, play with things. But then also once we do get that switched over to being on top of Acquia CMS, it's gonna be a really great example of how you could potentially do the same. Right? Take the pieces you want, add in your own stuff and make your own flavor. Cool stuff. Very cool. All right, you guys, it's 12.54. Anybody have any last questions? Go 
going once, going twice. All right. Well, thank you so much to Michael and Ron for joining us. It was really an outstanding demo, and I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to virtually visit California <laughs> and share. Maybe when we do this next year in person, we can convince you to come out and enjoy campus in person. I twist my arm. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I won't take any convincing. My, my socks are getting a little old. I, I need a fresh influx of uh, Aquia socks. Oh. So. I'll help you out. Th thanks for having us for sure. And um, I I can talk about Drupal all day long. So uh, it's a good excuse to get together on a Friday afternoon and share some stuff. Hopefully you guys will find some interesting things there. Absolutely. And hey, hang out at the rest of webcam sessions. There's more Drupal coming up, including our, our team is going to be talking about Decanter, which is our uh, design system and pattern library. And we're doing a demo of Stanford sites. So you can see uh, what we've done that has some similarities. <laughs> to what you've done. But um, thanks again for sharing and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks everyone, take care. Bye guys. Bye-bye.